Hello there, welcome back to another Fortran video with Ingeni Titan. So this is a long delayed video and I must apologize for the delays and hold up. Some of it is uh, just time constraints, I just ran out of time. Um, so I think the update came out on Tuesday, so we're talking about 0 0.12.0.1. Now I'd had a look at the preview and I'd had a look through the preview skirmish which would be 0 0.12.0. And I didn't, you know, I hadn't, I played the skirmish game again, which is my usual way of evaluating the, um, the an update, just to see what the difference between one iteration to the other. But it, nothing really stood out to me uh, over the course of playing the, the skirmish game. Now, they've added quite a lot of stuff. We'll go through the individual uh, things later on. But I didn't have so say, a strong opinion one way or the other on the new uh, update. And in some ways, the skirmish game has gotten more predictable and easy. Um, but we'll go into that later as well. So I thought, right, well, the only thing to do really is play through the, um, the campaign. So I think I started that... Um, on Wednesday but I didn't manage to get it complete and I finished it up on Thursday morning I said right we'll knock the video out early and we'll get it done by lunchtime and as I was adding the voiceover to the video I noticed that um, I had video I had glitches in the video it was some of the video was not uh, rendering correctly in the uh, proxy rendering on my uh, uh, my video editor and I have a an ongoing problem. Essentially, the hardware I have isn't really good enough to reliably um, record video of good enough quality to get it rendered uh, every time that I play a game on my computer. But it'll do it most of the time. So, like ninety percent of the time, it works. But this wasn't one of those occasions. Um, at least one of the video clips sources that I was using is uh, has a, it's too variable in the frame rate and once the variability goes past a certain point the um, video editor throws a fit because it looks for a frame and it doesn't find one because what happens basically is that as the computer becomes more congested uh, shadow play records fewer frames it just drops the frame rate to keep everything going and you play the game the game's quite smooth and the video looks okay when you play it on a standard uh, video player but the video editor would go frame blah 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 is missing and throw a fit so i hadn't completed the voice stuff i had just a rough cut of how i wanted the thing to look and i wasn't happy with the way it was um, playing out so i thought to myself okay we'll have to um We'll try to render it and see what happens. And sure enough, it failed. So then I have to go and convert everything to a constant frame rate, which has to be done using a utility called Handbrake. And uh, it takes it does it in real time. So if you have a two hour video, or two and a half hour video, even though you're using only a 20 minute clip, it'll have to convert the whole two and a half hours. So much for my efforts to get a rapid response out to the latest update for Triumph. However, uh, that aside, and that's my own trials and tribulations, what do I think of the updates? Well, what are the updates? Well, first of all, they brought in hero traits. Uh, each hero now gets a pair of randomly generated traits. I They're supposed to affect how the heroes play out in combat and various other things. I can't say that I've noticed. Um... I've seen the icons popping up, but I'm not sure what they're doing. Perhaps if I play it over and over again and I see similar traits turning up over and over again. Now some of them are obvious and visible. There's one of them called Icy or Ice Cold or something like that. And it's pretty obvious what that one does in that the, the um, character actually leaves a trail of ice. And when they hit um, their enemies, they give the frost condition. And that's pretty obvious. 
But some of the others, I have no idea what they're doing. And it's not obvious to me that they're doing anything. Um, but they probably are. And I don't know if, if repeated playing will you know, allow you to sort of figure out what it is that they're doing without having to go into detailed uh, sort of reverse engineering, as in, as in looking at the bonuses and working out exactly how much damage was delivered by that uh, attack by the pallet and was that more than their normal damage or less on a particular round uh, was there a variability in their damage because they had some kind of inconsistency trait or something along those lines I don't know uh, but it's not obvious at the moment at least not to me on another more positive note another change that they have made is that they have um, changed the intro music to the campaign so when you open up the tavern you get some new music So another major change is they've introduced this new graphical town management system. So your town is now represented as a graphical um, piece of geography in space. Like So you have a map of the town and you have the various buildings and you have plots of land that are undeveloped. So you to build a building, a fresh building that you haven't um, already got, then you need to spend money to develop the plot so that the plot is available f to be built on. And then you spend money to buy the building that you're putting on the plot you can do it all in one step or you could take it on two steps you could develop the plot first and you could build the building in a subsequent turn when you have the money available but if well when you do so the other thing about the building is the building is not available on the turn you build it so if you're building something like say uh, the infirmary which gives uh, an improved health bonus to your um, to your units, to your heroes, or to all units, I think, then the um, the health bonus won't appear on the turn that you um, construct the building. You'll have to wait a full turn before you get the benefit of the health bonus. Another big change in this iteration is that Renown is back into the game, and Renown is now the currency by which you buy guild upgrades. So there have been some changes as well to the guild upgrades, and I think, that, and there have been some changes to the buildings that are available. Uh, so some of the the names of the buildings have been changed, even though the functionality of the building remains the same. For instance, the kindergarten is now the grudge arena. Um, the guild stuff uh, includes now minor armor bonuses, minor attack offense or bonuses, weapon bonuses. Say for the human faction as well as the tactics and. Um, other things that used to be in the uh, guild before but now they're purchased with this renowned currency and uh, so now you have essentially three resource pools in the game uh, you have bitcoin magic and renown and the guild stuff i think is completely available on renown and renown is only won by fighting battles so you have to do well in battles and the quality of your victory will affect the amount of renown that you get for the battle but I presume you get a certain kind of base of renown for any kind of victory you manage to scrape out there are of course a variety of other tweaks and changes as well that you need to check out the full release notes to look at but they're the major ones and they have announced as well that the next major upgrade um, planned for next month they're going to introduce physics using enemies. Now I think physics using enemies will be transformational. Uh, it will be a huge change to the game. And will possibly invalidate quite a lot of current strategies. Uh, remains to be seen to say how good the AI is. At the moment I think the AI tactically has improved massively. Uh, by leaps and bounds. So... And it's one of the reasons I think the campaign game has gotten more difficult, while the skirmish game has actually gotten easier. And the reason I say this is, it's a viable strategy, because I've used it two, three times now, in the skirmish game, to actually ignore the AI. You go out with your party, you pick the easy fights, or the easier fights, and you gather resources. 
you concentrate and focus on gathering resources. You go around, you garrison your town, obviously, and you garrison your town to the best you can, but you don't prioritize the strength of the town garrison over upgrades that increase the efficiency of your party. So the guild upgrades in particular, um, things like, say, for the humans, the, uh, was it, Grudge, Grudge, Grudge Arena, Money generating stuff, beat distil beat coin distilleries and stuff like that, uh, town hall upgrades, um, fort upgrades. Because the fort upgrades will upgrade will massively enhance the defence of your town, uh, because they give they unlock higher level units, they give you high, large numbers of uh, they increase your hero cap. And they also because especially now that uh, cages spawn heroes again, rather than spawning parties of uh, minions. Un unlocking the hero cap was actually more important than it was in earlier iterations but the the point i'm making is that you basically ignore the the ai you leave the ai the ai will arrive probably in turn week two with a strong party um stronger than you would be able to take on with your heroes and it will attack your town and it will probably take your town but you should be able to inflict such massive losses on that AI party that they may not be able to hold your town or may not even bother holding your town. So, in the worst case scenario, the AI beats your town, leaves a garrison in the town and comes out weakened from both the assault in the town and from leaving the garrison to the point where your AI primary or your primary party can then go take it on, beat the uh, AI party, and then go and retake your town. Because you have to retake your town to regain, for instance, uh, a lot of your uh, building benefits. Plus, if you, uh, should we say, don't hold the town, and the AI manages to jump you with a decent party, um, you might not you, you might not survive, should we say, the, the experience. And then you continue on as before. The AI will come out sometime later with another strong party. Possibly at this stage your party will be a lot more experienced. It'll be closer to maxed out on levels. And some of the characters, some of the heroes will have actually reached the, the highest level. Unlocked some of the highest level skills. At this point it's more than likely that your party could take them. Although you may not want to take the risk, you may not. You may want to send a minion party in first to soften them up. But either way, you could let them assault the town, you could take them to the field, it doesn't really matter. The point is that you're mopping up resources and at, one, at some stage you will control all the resources on the map. And at that point the AI's uh, strength is going to wane. Because any further party admits is only generated from its base town resources. Which is not going to be as good as uh, the extra resources you get. So for instance the AI party is goblins. But there's buildings that provide goblin bombers. So that you know, the other way you get uh, buildings that provide uh, goblin other creatures. They might provide trolls or they might provide goblin bombers and things like that that would be cheaper than buying them to the directly from the town so that kind of stuff uh, goes down so the ai's resource management isn't as good as uh, a person's at least not at the moment however if the ai is using physics in the battle then the battles become a lot tougher and that the viability of that strategy might not hold you might actually have to uh, you might not be able to fort let the AI arrive with a maxed out party. And the AI also uh, would probably place a higher priority on gathering resources because, again, um, its source of strength is now the same basis as your source of strength. So at the moment, the AI seems to value Bitcoin farms more than it values any other resource on the map. Um... Whereas if the AI is based on is using physics, and is relying on uh, attributes and uh, level up uh, attributes, the same as you are, then the AI will value other resources great more more than the Bitcoin farms. It'll have to, otherwise it won't stay competitive. 
So that's going to be a very interesting change, and I'm certainly looking forward to see how it goes. But at the other, at the other hand, I think that the um, the AI's tactical battle management has actually gotten a lot better. Uh, it's less reckless, say, again, go back to Goblin Bombers, for instance, at the start. Several months ago, for instance, I don't know, I can't remember which exactly update. Goblin Bombers were tended to be uh, crazy. They, uh, they, they, they'd caused at least as much destruction, if not more destruction, to the enemy team, to their allies, basically, than they did to you. Now they're uh, a lot more circumspect about when they self-detonate, about when they throw their bombs, and stuff like that. So you, uh, you'll you see units are much less likely to try to trigger um, attacks of opportunity. Um, they're more likely to go after the squishy units, go after a kill. Um, ranged units are more likely to try and circle around with the flanks on the, say, out of your interception range. To get on to get you into positions where you can they can get crossfires and they can uh, flank your positions so that negate cover and cover is going to become really interesting um should we say when physics comes into play because cover then certain types of cover like trees are as dangerous to you as um in in the in with physics in play there might be two trees and rocks in these that might actually be too dangerous to be taking cover in because uh, you can kick trees and rocks into people um, I mean one of the things I use in caverns for instance a lot of the time is deliberately release the spiders from the spider eggs because there's usually more they're usually closer to the AI units and there's usually more AI units so they're far more likely to attack the AI than they're to attack me uh, and it's a viable tactic at the moment. Whether it stays that way with the physics, I don't know. And as I was saying, because I think the AI has gotten better at the tactical aspect of the combat, it's actually made the um, campaign version uh, more challenging. Because you can run, if you dally too long now and build up your units, it doesn't make a much difference to the story fights. Okay, I think the, the rescue, the, um, what you call it? Um, rescuing the Savage at the start of turns is a really hard fight if you go at it straight off the bat. So you do have to build up your, your units a little bit. But if you wait too long, for instance, and you build up your units too much, it won't make a significant difference to the difficulty of the story mode fights. But it makes it more likely that you'll run into an AI party that will actually be too strong for your party. Especially now that you're also a level captain in the campaign. So you're in episode one, you're only allowed to go so far and uh, build up so far, build up traits or acquire traits only up to a certain level. So there's uh, some swings and roundabouts to be played with there and you just have to be careful about the timing of when you go for the, uh, the uh, story mode encounters. But I have had the experience of waiting too long being blocked by an AI party that was too strong to beat. One other thing that I think deserves mention that uh, I think that this game is getting very close to the final straight. Um, I don't know what they're going to do beyond, uh, well, once the physics introduction becomes a thing, um, I suspect at that stage they're on the final push towards release. And I, I don't know, I don't envisage uh, much of the further changes, but it's going to be a lot harder for the likes of um, YouTubers like myself to actually comment on further iterations of the game at that stage because the um, the emphasis will be more and more on polishing the experience and optimizing the game and fixing bugs than it will be actually making any kind of radical alterations to the gameplay. And um, it may be that I will have less and less to say about this game or the future months uh, until the final release at least in video format and also I'd like to keep the game fresh for myself so I'll just wait and see developments but we'll see how it works out but certainly I am looking forward to the final versions of this game uh, I think it is uh, it's a little gem in the making and uh, 
I'm delighted to have been involved with it and to have experienced what I've experienced so far. I've had a lot of fun on the journey and I hope you had, have had it also. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and share. Uh, feel free to comment. If you've not already done so, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. I will catch you all again soon. Bye for now.